Hello, and welcome to A Watchman's Journal. I'm Diana Larkin. This week's prophetic words that we'll be going over are very weighty, very serious. But sprinkled in, there are some amazing promises of a bright future. Holy Spirit, we invite you to join us. We welcome you to rest on us. Open our hearts and our spirits to hear what the Father is saying to us, the counsel he is giving us, the directions, and the encouragement. And we thank you in Jesus' name. This episode is entitled, The Curtain is Falling. We're going to start with August 3rd of this year. The weight of my glory will fall. My glory is very weighty. If I were to release the fullness of my glory upon the earth, it would crush it. That is why I carefully measure out the amount of my glory that I release. On those who are mine or who are seeking me, I will release my glory in a measure that will heal, deliver, restore, and it will bring you directly into my presence. Your hearts will be set on fire with my passionate love for you. My glory will fall on the wicked in an entirely different way. On them, I will unleash the full weight of my glory. They will be crushed or consumed by it. Very serious words. There is no place to hide from my glory. Neither deep underground tunnels or nearly inaccessible mountaintops will protect you from my weighty glory. It will search out the wicked. It will expose them and bring them to judgment and justice. Hidden vaults with many steel doors will not hide you from my weighty glory. You think there is power in your nuclear bombs? They are as nothing compared to the power of my weighty glory. My people, this is why I tell you not to fear. My weighty glory is for you and I will bless and protect you and it will seek out and crush the enemies that have arrogantly risen against us. Call for my weighty glory to come to your nation and to move out into the rest of the world. It will bless my people and it will crush your enemies. My kingdom will come and my will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Very interesting some of the uh, details that he gave us about the possible hiding places of the wicked. Uh, he talks about deep underground tunnels, inaccessible mountaintops, and like hidden vaults with many steel doors. Really interesting that he's revealing that to us and also to those who need to fear his weighty glory. Let's move on to August 4th when I heard the entry that this episode is entitled for The Curtain is Falling. This is the final act of the arrogant elite who sought to control you and the whole world. The curtain is falling on the last scene. This scene ends with their complete destruction. All their evil plans, their great wealth, their carefully constructed power structures will all be gone, gone, gone. Those who are still alive when the curtain falls will be forced to watch from behind bars as I bless the nations with their wealth and feed them from their selfish stockpiles. All the monuments, buildings, and organizations they built will be done away with. They will see their life's work and all schemes of generations be brought to nothing, and they will know that I am God. Will this be the end of evil on earth? Not at this time, because the enemy will find others. He can gain a foothold in their hearts and minds to work his schemes. Be very careful that you do not hold on to offense, because that is one of the key ways the enemy gains a foothold in your heart and life. This season will be a reprieve from the enemy's plans to bring in his darkness and control of the world before its time. The curtain is falling on those partnered with darkness, but a curtain will be rising to display my good plans and blessings 
on this season that you have cried out for and battled with me to obtain. This is a season of falling and rising curtains. Darkness is falling and my light will arise. I really like it that he says they are going against him and us. And I like that, that he's including himself. <laughs> I like him as the powerful partner that he is. Do not hold on to offense. I think if you go back into the lives of those who have partnered with darkness, you will find some major offenses that they never received God's grace to deal with. And it caused them to become hard hearted and bitter and to slip into darkness one step at a time. So body of Christ, forgive and move on. We're gonna read a journal nugget, which is an entry from last year, August 4th of 2021, called as a Cyrus, returning as a David. I have given you many patterns in my word that help you understand the season that you and your nation are in. Moses in the Red Sea, Saul and David, the resurrection, David in exile when the kingdom was stolen from him, all to show you patterns that you can expect to play out. I called DJT to be my Cyrus for your nation during his first term, but I'm bringing him back for his second term as my David, and I will cause him to triumph over his enemies and to stabilize and prosper this nation he will acknowledge me in all his ways and will give glory to my name. Things look dark and desperate for King David, but I delivered him out of it all. I am promising you I will do this for DJT as well. So take heart and keep fighting in faith. Um, the word triumph means a lot to me and the Father will speak that word to me a lot. I mean, it's a great word in itself, it also contains the letters of someone very uh, dear to most of our hearts. Uh, and I will mention Johnny Enlow had a vision uh, before the, the uh, 2016 election of DJT on a motorcycle and he rode clear to the top of the mountain and he got off his motorcycle and Johnny Enlow saw the brand of the motorcycle. It was a triumph. August 5th, I heard this entry, double for your trouble. Now this is a good entry. I have a message for those who have believed my promises of a rescue operation for your nation. In spite of fierce opposition, the boasting voice of the enemy and the lying media, your faith and your continued pushback of darkness will receive a reward. In fact, I am promising you double for your trouble. Watch as I double your anointing on the gifts I have placed in you. Your life will become very fruitful for my kingdom. Are you concerned about your finances? Watch me double those as well. See, I will even give you double favor with those who pulled away from you or thought you were misled. Can you wrap your brain around this? For some will receive even more than double as recompense and reward. Don't face the future with dread, asking yourself, how bad is it going to get? Instead, face the future with faith in my power to deliver your land and in my promise of double for your trouble. Amen. August 6th, I heard the sounds of life. This is an encouragement uh, that will get us through this amazing season that we find ourselves in. In the midst of strife and turmoil that the enemy is seeking to sow, into the atmosphere. I don't want you to miss the sounds of life. The enemy seeks to bring destruction and death, but don't forget I'm the God of life. Choose to live in my atmosphere of life instead of being pulled into the enemy's swirl of threats and confusion. I want your ears tuned to my sounds of life. Really listen and you will hear my life all around you. The singing birds, laughing children, my wind moving through the treetops, my gentle whisper to your ear, I've come to give you abundant life. If you're full of my sounds of life, then when you hear of conflicts, you'll release my peace. When you hear of loss or destruction, you'll release my comfort. 
and my restoration. Anybody can bemoan or get angry at what those serving darkness are doing to cause loss and destruction. But if you are filled with my life and my presence, you can actually change the dark atmosphere the enemy has released by speaking my life, my power to overcome darkness, and my restoration to any loss. When you tune to the sounds of life, you're actually tuning to my presence because I am everywhere there is life. When you speak my life into a situation, you're throwing hand grenades into the enemy's plans for destruction and blowing them up right in his face. Draw near to me and I will help you hear the sounds of life. August 7th, I heard from tragedy to triumph. The darkness and those partnered with it are working feverishly to bring about great tragedy to your land. Their purpose is to destroy everything I have purposed for your nation to be. Their hatred of anything good and their lust for power and wealth have driven them to throw every evil scheme and plan that they have against you and your nation. Let me remind you that as wealthy as they are, they only have a finite amount of wealth to continue carrying out their evil plans. You cannot see this, but I am cutting supply line after supply line of their sources of wealth. Now here's a, cl a clue that their su supply lines, this is something we can pick up on if we'll look from his perspective. Here's a clue that their supply lines are being cut. All the big funding bills they're trying to pass in Congress, just a way for them to siphon off money for themselves. Getting desperate, they are. I also want you to remember that my wealth and power are unlimited. And quite suddenly, the darkness will find all their wealth will be taken from them. All their dark schemes will implode in their midst and they will come face to face with complete exposure and terrifying justice. Backed by heaven's power and righteousness, the darkness has an expected end. You have a guaranteed new beginning. Backed by all of heaven's resources and power, you will be a witness to your nation rising from tragedy to triumph. Amen. A journal nugget from last year, August 7th, the clouds are gathering. This is especially uh, applicable today because I don't know how many people have responded to me that they are seeing the strangest cloud formations they've ever seen in their lives. And I will be a witness to that, to that as well. They've just stopped me in my tracks when I've looked up. I've just never seen cloud formations like that in my life. The Father spoke, clouds are gathering over your nation and a massive storm is about to be unleashed. These clouds are my dark glory and they are full of my thunder, shakings, my lightning, exposures, and my pouring rain, truth. These shakings, exposures, and a torrent of truth will be unleashed all over your land in a great flood that cannot be stopped or explained away. Can a nation be changed in a day? Watch and see what I will do. The darkness sees this huge storm coming in and they will lash out in panic and great fear and hatred. Keep up the prayer wall against the enemy's plots, schemes, and assignments. Take authority over them in the power of my son's name and direct the host of heaven to bring down those plots, expose the plans, and highlight those who plan these evil schemes so they can be brought to justice. Watch the sky. Massive storm clouds are forming. August 8th, I heard to have a free nation, you must have a free people. In order for your nation to remain free after my rescue operation, you must have a people who have been freed in their thinking, in their hearts, and in their behavior to one another. I'm not talking about outwardly keeping the rules. I am speaking of hearts that have been set free from darkness by my love expressed in the sacrifice of my son on the cross. When you apply that sacrifice to your life and surrender 
your life to me, then your spirit is transferred from darkness into the light. Holy Spirit then begins the lifelong transformation of your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. Out of the world system, which is rooted in darkness and man's self-efforts, into the kingdom of light, which is rooted in love, true freedom, and holiness. It was for freedom that Christ set you free, and it takes a people operating in his freedom to remain a free nation. The more people in a nation that are operating out of my kingdom of light, the more freedom your nation will experience. This is why part of my rescue operation is drawing people to the freedom and light of salvation. Ask Holy Spirit to help you see where your thinking has been affected without you realizing it by the darkness that has invaded your land. Ask him to uncover any faults, self-seeking motives that you may be operating in. These wrong motives will bring, bring strife, division, and jealousy into my body and into my nation. Growth from darkness to light can be uncomfortable, but the fruit of a clear conscience and a heart free to love others is so worth it. It will provide the good foundation needed to keep America free. This freedom will cause joy and peace and a deeper fellowship with me. To have a free nation, you must have a free people. It is so worth it to let the Holy Spirit deal with the motives in your heart because none of us have them all right, believe me. Uh, and you can tell the clues are if what you are doing is causing strife, division, or you're experiencing jealousy, there's a wrong motive in there that Holy Spirit will be happy to help you uncover and deal with, put under the blood. On August 9th, a very encouraging word, the curse has been lifted. I want you to realize your years of prayers, decrees, and tears concerning our the way uh, that hung over your nation as a dark cloud were answered by my direct intervention. And I just put that a little bit in code, R V W. <clears throat> so he's telling us this was his direct intervention. It was my hand that set the justices free and gave them the courage to be able to bring down this unlawful ruling that had opened a portal of death over your land. Army of Light, you had a great part in this, and this victory should be celebrated because the curse has been broken and lifted. In the natural, it may not seem to you that things have improved for your nation. Realize that is because you are seeing the darkness rebel against me even harder, scream slurs louder against those who stand with life and with me and can continue to launch chaos and destruction. Let them rage and threaten you, but I tell you, they are all coming down. Don't be distracted by their hatred and noise. We're now on the offensive and we will win. You have been noticing the signs I've given you that a breakthrough has occurred. The strange cloud formations are letting you know the hosts are in full force fighting for you and for freedom. Are you sensing more angelic presence than ever before? I will confirm that this is true because huge portals are now open because the dark cloud was brought down and the curse against your land was lifted. My people, get your focus off the clap trap of the enemy. Put your focus on me, and together we will push through to victory. Uh, the definition of clap trap is pretentious, insincere, or empty language. Guess I'll just leave that right there. As, and he spoke to us in this word, what those strange cloud formations were seeing. I think most of us had guessed, it's the host. He's allowing us to see them through the clouds. They are fighting for us and for our freedom. 
As far as sensing more angelic presence, I will say yes to that. Uh, I just, in the last probably month, I realized that outside my sunroom where I come to meet with the Father every morning, there are angelic hosts lined up on every side of my sunroom. I mean, they are shoulder to shoulder. There is nothing that could get in between them. And in the middle of the sunroom, there's this angel that's so big, I can't see the top of him. He goes through the roof. So God is serious about the angelic protection he's providing for us right now. We're going to win. No more paying attention to the claptrap of the enemy. One of my followers posted that word as small letters clap and capital letters trap. And I thought, oh, that's perfect. Their clap trap is actually going to be their trap. Their words are going to capture them. On August 10th, this morning, I heard, reap the whirlwind. This comes after some very, um, very, um, what's the word I want to say, really over the top. Uh, tyrannical life um, movements made against our leader that uh, we know should be rightfully in place and uh, so anyway I, I really wasn't thinking about that this morning I was just thinking how beautiful everything was outside my sun room so this kind of caught me on, off guard but I know that it was him speaking because I wasn't thinking along these lines at all. So this is a word of warning and a word of encouragement to us. The darkness thinks they are oh so clever and powerful. Their arrogance knows no bounds. Instead of magnifying the one who made them, they, are ch they have chosen to exalt themselves. They have puffed themselves up with their self-importance. I have quite a different view of them. I see them as a giant balloon full of hot air, and I have big pins of truth lined up to pop these delusions of grandeur. Their hot air and vindictive schemes against you and your rightful leader have unleashed a whirlwind that they are sure will work this time. But I tell you, in their pride and hatred, they have only positioned themselves to reap the whirlwind they have unleashed. My hand of power, my mighty voice of truth will boomerang this whirlwind back into their camp. They will be blown apart, their unity destroyed, their secrets uncovered, and fear will grip their hearts when they realize that I am who I say I am. Do not fear their whirlwind. Whatever destructive plans they had for you will come back full force onto them. They will reap the whirlwind they have sown. Powerful words. We're going to go over our marching orders that we were given in these words this week. And then we're going to end with a beautiful journal nugget. So our marching orders, Army of Light, do not fear. Call for his weighty glory. Take heart and keep fighting in faith. Face the future with faith in his power to deliver and give us double for our trouble. Hear the sounds of life. Speak life into situations. It's like a hand grenade thrown into the enemy's plans and it blows up in their faces. Take authority over the enemy's plans in the name of Jesus. Direct the host of heaven to bring down these plots. Expose those who planned them. Surrender to the transforming power of the Holy Spirit to align your thoughts, emotions, and motives with heaven's freedom. Do not focus on the claptrap of the enemy, but focus on the Father and push through to victory. We can do it. We can push through to the victory. August 10th of last year, a beautiful entry. Mercy, triumph, and glory. Hmm, my favorite word again. Waves of mercy, triumph, and glory are set to roll across your land. During these last days of fierce battle, I want you to know what I have promised will come to pass. 
and you will see with your own eyes as I bring mercy to the deceived, the lost, the trapped, and I will bring triumph for it looks like all is lost. And I will send my glory to heal and restore and repay all that has been lost and stolen. Keep reminding yourself of my sure promises, even as circumstances look the opposite. Realize that setbacks can be setups to great exposures that will result in justice, judgment, and victory. I am asking you to trust me on a new and deeper level and to take your stand on my faithfulness. When the victory comes, it will be a triumph of your faith in me and the celebration will be sweet and the rewards great. Watch for my waves of mercy, triumph, and glory. Let's remember that, that setbacks can be set ups for great exposures. Father, we thank you for your beautiful voice, your powerful voice. We thank you that judgment and justice are coming. Righteousness will be restored. You are not thrown off by any of the plans of darkness. In fact, you're about 19 steps ahead. So we partner with you. We bring in your glory. We bring in your victory. And we say we will stand with you. You are faithful. Give us courage and strength to be faithful to you. We thank you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Thanks for joining me this week. And until we meet again, may you be blessed with his peace and his glory.